I am here with former NFL player and current pro MMA fighter Pierre Walters. Pierre, it's good to meet you. How's life? Man, life is good, man. I have no complaints. I'm alive and healthy, and uh, I'm here today with you. How, how, uh, how, how are things with you? Things are going great, man. I start my junior year of college tomorrow, but, uh, but I am really looking forward to speaking with you. Once again, you were an NFL player. Now you're a pro MMA fighter. Kind of talk about that transition between the two sports. Um, well, for me personally, uh, the transition was kind of natural just because I've always been a type to have to test myself physically. You know, um, football is a completely different world. And at the end of the day, it's a game. It's a reckless game, but it's a game. Um, fighting isn't a game. You know, uh, I, I make the mistake sometime of saying this game, referring to fighting. I know I, I've heard other fighters say it and I really try hard to remove it from my vocabulary because it's, it's really two different things. It's, it's extremely serious. But um, my transition has been a smooth one. Uh, like I said, you know, it's something that came natural to me, wanting to test myself uh, upon retiring from football. Um, you know, I took a couple years off, uh, you know, just to try to figure out what's, what's new in my life. And, you know, I was working for a while and start to get that itch to move again and, uh, that's when I found Victory Martial Arts, and it's been it's been great ever since. Now, obviously, being a pro football player, you are incredibly strong. You you are definitely an athlete. So, like learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, learning you know boxing technique and stuff like that, that was natural to you. Like like you pretty much picked that up right away. Um, I'll say the uh, just like like as far as it being coached to me. I'm able to absorb coaching well and uh, coaching very fast. But uh, as far as translating or transitioning the muscle fibers, right, um, from that explosive tension, you know, um, I'm pretty sure not every athlete, but myself, when I played football, you know, in the weight room, during the games, practices, it was always intensity, right, intensity, intensity. Most of the time, you can't carry that intensity in the in the jujitsu or striking. You got to stay relaxed and calm and things like that. So, um, for me, that was the biggest challenge was being able to stay relaxed and not use my muscle um, and just uh, trust the technique. And I found that you know if if you can do that, then you know it's the, uh, all the other attributes, right? The the strength and uh, everything else uh, just makes it all that much better. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, staying calm, as you mentioned, in mixed martial arts is, is essential. You have to stay calm before you enter the cage, or else by the time you enter the cage, you're already going to be exhausted just from worrying about the fight. Obviously, football, yeah. as you said, is a complete different animal. But in mixed martial arts, on the day of a fight for you, you've had quite a few now, how do you kind of stay relaxed? Do you have any rituals that kind of keep you calm? Um, no rituals. Uh, I, ju I just know why I do this, you know. Um, no one's forcing me to fight, you know what I mean? Um, nobody's forcing me to fight. This is something that I want to do. This is something that I love doing. This is my passion now. Um, I love competition, and this is the most pure form of competition. You can't compete any deeper than what MMA is, you know. So uh, for me, it's just a thing where I, I understand – 100% why I'm doing this, you know, there's there's no gray areas. Uh, so that allows me to just enjoy it and, and uh, uh, get what I came for in this sport, which is uh, moving up the ranks, getting belts, and uh, getting to that big show, um, whichever show that may be, but getting to that big show one day. Awesome. Well, you're certainly off to a great start in your career. I've watched quite a few of your fights. Regarding your amateur career, you, had, you were very successful. You went 4-1. and one. You're now a pro athlete. Once again, you won your pro debut, HFC 36, in February. How did it feel to, you know, kind of make your pro debut but get the W? Man, it, it was a good feeling. You know, um, obviously, it was it was a lot of fun. HFC has a great promotion. Um, they treated me very well. Um, uh, it, it was it was fun. Um, but but the fight itself, that was just a real a real uh, real dark time. Um, for me, uh, as I'm sure you know, my mom was, uh, she was in the hospital at that time and, uh, she was on life support the night of the fight. So, um, that night was just all about business for me, you know, um, 
Uh, I was I was just focused the entire week. Um, and again, I did enjoy myself. Don't get me wrong. You know, uh, when, when I show up for those shows, uh, especially even back then, given everything that was going on, um, I, I, I had fun. I have a great team. I have great coaches. And, uh, you know, we had a blast. But for the most part, it was just a business trip. You know, I was there just to get a job done and then come back and handle handle uh, handle my personal life. So um, it was good. It was a real good experience. I'm looking forward to the next one. Nothing signed yet, you know. Um, right now I'm still talking to other promoters, other promotions, you know, just trying to keep my options open. You know, options options are always great, especially in this, uh, in the fight world, so. You know, obviously you had five fights as an amateur. Uh, you know, I, obviously you got the experience you needed as an amateur, you know, like give you the skills to go to the pro level, but why was 2018 the year that you uh, took your skills to the pro ranks? <clears throat> um, it was just time, man, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I still got a whole lot of gas in the tank, you know, but uh, um, it was just time, you know, a mixture of um, myself being prepared and um, a lack of opponents. Um, you know, I, I feel like uh, in this area, um, I, I fought the best uh, amateur light heavyweights that could have been provided, you know, all top ranked guys since since my amateur debut. You know, respect to those guys. Um they're, they're an integral part of who I am as a fighter today. So I always got respect for them. Um, but it was just time for me to move on and, and take that next step. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I actually had a chance to watch, once again, some of your fights. How would you kind of, like, describe your game? Because uh, a couple of things I picked up while watching you fight, your striking is very versatile. You're very, very um, – I guess the way like to, to say it is you're very technically sound fighter. That is something I really like about you. It's kind of like you measure every punch before you throw it. How would you describe your game? That's true. You're accurate. Um, I'm I'm a very cerebral fighter. I'm a thinker. You know, I like to, I like to um, not necessarily strategize, but uh, I move with a purpose. You know, I move with a purpose, and um, you know, uh, I I like to play with the weapons or tools that um, my coaches give me. You know, um, since I started in 2014. You know, it's just been about adding to the arsenal, right? Adding to the arsenal, whether it be on the feet, on the ground. Um, but uh, I am a natural striker. I love keeping on the feet. And so I really like to play there, you know. Um, um, in, in the past, uh, I, I know my style hasn't completely come out, you know. Um, and that's the one thing I'm most looking forward to, Um Back then, even in my pro debut, I, I know I was fighting with a lot of uh, subconscious tension or pressure. Like, I couldn't make a mistake, right? Um, my mom was on my mind the entire time. You know what I'm saying? She always, always, you know, uh, through her ordeal with cancer, you know, I was sharing her fight because I was right there with her um, going through it all, you know, and, and giving her what she needed. So, um Although my style was calculated and, you know, kind of slick, I still was fighting with restraints because I didn't want to make a mistake. Now, just wait. You see that the chains are going to be off. The chains are going to be off, and, and I'm going to put it all together. Pierre, for you, looking ahead, what are some of your goals for 2018, you know, even 2019? Well, um, my goal for this year uh, is to fight one more time. Um, have a big show, you know, I'd love to have a show in Chicago, right? I, I got so many friends and family members who have just been waiting, you know, especially everything that's transpired, they, they you know, they, they can't wait to uh, get close so we could throw a big party and, and, and uh, you know, hopefully main or co-main event a show. But um, I want to finish this year out strong with a fight. And then 2019, I want to hit the ground running. I want to get at least three fights in next year. You know, next year has got to be the year where, um, you know, I make that big push, you know. So um, my plan is to uh, fight this fall uh, or early winter, uh, December, um, you know, have a strong showing, come out that fight clean, and then uh, get that ball rolling next year. I did want to get your thoughts on, uh, you know, on some big headlines recently. Greg Hardy. Uh, was on the Dana White Contender Series. That's another NFL player who made that leap to mixed martial arts. Uh, yeah. I, I believe he, you actually have significantly more amateur experience than he does. And his opponent, who he fought on the show, was also an NFL player. So we've been seeing some success there. What are your thoughts on all that? 
Yeah, you talking about when he fought Austin Lane? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually played against Austin Lane in college. He went to Murray State. And, uh, you know, I played football at uh, Eastern Illinois. So, you know, that was that was kind of uh, surreal to watch. But um, to me, it's only natural. It's only natural, man. Um, you know, again, you, you talk about the certain type of people that gravitate towards certain things. Um, and you have a sport like football, which is obviously a rough one. Um, you know, and, and when it's time to hang it up, if, if you know, guys still have that itch um, to want to wanna compete and, you know, MMA is the new hot thing now and, you know, uh, athletes are crossing over. But I will say this, uh, a little message saw the athletes crossing over and, and I say this out of experience, don't get it twisted, right? Do not come up in this, in, in prize fighting thinking that, uh, you know, your attributes, right? You're bigger, you're stronger, you're more athletic, you're, you're faster is, is, is going to just get you wins because it's not, right? Uh, somebody much less physically uh, or even mentally gifted can, uh, can, can beat you, you know? They, they could whoop you with basics. So um, that's, that's the one thing that I make sure that I look out to see if I could peep, you know, to see if, uh, to see if you know, any crossover athletes you know, are kind of going in with, with just reckless abandon or, you know, if, if, if I can read between the lines, you know, whether it be in their fights or in their interviews or in their camp to see, like, okay, like, you know, are they staying patient? Are they trying to learn or, and absorb as much as they can? Um, but, you know, props to him. You know, it, it, it looks like, you know, he's, he's done what he needed to do to change his life around uh, for the better. And, um, you know, he's, he's starting a new chapter. So he's off to a good start. Absolutely. I, I think it would be really, really cool to see you in the near future, maybe get a big shot like that, because obviously, and, and this was me talking to your coach as well, you've been training incredibly hard. I think you have all the gifts, all the assets needed to be a successful pro fighter. I really do. Hey, I agree with you, man. You know, uh, 2019, hopefully the first or second quarter of next year, you know, we can make that step. You know, I definitely feel that I'm ready. Um, but I know I still, I still got some things to prove. That's why I'm staying patient. You know, I've, uh, since I, since I started in MMA, you know, I didn't walk in the gym, beating my chest or talking anything like, oh, I want to fight, I want to fight. The first thing I told Danny Summers, that's, uh, that's the manager here and, and, and our head coach of our fight team, um, and a former fighter himself. Uh, the first thing I told him was, man, I just want to learn. You know, I, I don't, I don't care about a cage. I don't care about, you know, an opponent or any type of competition. I just want to learn, you know, and, and I spent those uh, those first two years just learning. And then, uh, you know, we took off from there. So, uh, yep. Perfect. 2019 is going to be the year for you, Pierre. The floor is yours. Anyone you'd like to thank? Man, how much time you got? <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, really, man. Uh, well, first, you, I'd, I'd like to thank you for taking this time out your morning. To, um, you know, uh, let me share your platform. I really appreciate that. Um, I want to thank my teammates, um, everybody at Victory Martial Arts in Forest Park. Um, you know, is we're we're a big family. You know, they're 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 a family to me. They've supported me in in everything that I've done, uh, competition wise and in my personal life. Um, I definitely want to thank all my friends. You know, what I'm saying my 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 tight friends and my family um, who continue to support me um, through the good and the bad and the ugly. Right. Um, you know, I, I know who's all have been there um, and they know who, who, you know, who they are as well. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for supporting my career up to this point. And uh, we have a lot of good things to look forward to.